Welcome everyone, my name is Mark, and if you are new to the channel or you're not yet subscribed, before you go any further, please click my face down there in the corner to subscribe and ring that bell icon so you know when I post new videos. Now those of you who watch this channel regularly know that I travel a lot. And after a previous video that I did where we talked about how to log in with Southwest Airlines using the app or online, I had a lot of questions. People had follow-up questions about checking bags, how do we check in more than per one person at a time, and we're going to deal with those questions in this video. So let's get right into it. So the first question I have here is, so if I have two people flying, do we both have to check in? And there's a related question, I'll answer them both at the same time. When you check in for two people, Will we both be the same letter and number, or will it give us two different sets of letters and numbers? Now, typically, if you purchase tickets together, you're going to have the same confirmation number. If that's the case, and it probably will be, only one person has to check in. So what you're going to see once you check in is you are going to have consecutive boarding numbers. So you might have B3, B4, B5, and B6 for a group of four people or a group of two people you may see A7 and A8. Well, you probably won't see A7 and A8 because usually A1 through 15 is saved for people who purchase early boarding. But you might see A23 and A24, for example. Now, I always like to, I, you know, I'm a suspenders and belt kind of guy, meaning I like to always have a backup system. And if I have two people checked in, if I'm traveling with someone else, I like to play kind of a little game where we both try to check in at the same time and see who gets the number first. But typically, you know, that's just me because I, uh, I just like to, to be confident that I'm getting the best boarding number I can. But typically, if you order your tickets together, you're going to get the same confirmation number and so only one person has to check in. By the way, I've also been asked, do I have to check in for my return flight as well. Absolutely. The same rules apply. If you have an outbound flight and you check in 24 hours ahead, on the return flight you must also check in 24 hours ahead in order to get your boarding position. Let's look at the next question. How do you know where your seats are? With Southwest Airlines it's open seating. It's just like getting on a bus or getting on a train. There are no assigned seats. That's why I emphasize checking in at 24 hours on the button because everybody's trying to hit that check-in button to get the highest boarding number they can. Now, if that concerns you, I recommend early bird. Buy the early bird seat selection, but you don't have assigned seating. So the earlier your boarding is, in other words, the lower your boarding number, the better chance you have of getting the seat you want. Checked into a flight to Atlanta from Chicago and got A48. I can't tell if that's good or not because you went through 1 through 30. Yes, anything in the A group is going to be good. Here's how the boarding is going to work. You line up at the poles in groups A, B, or C. So you're going to have A1 through 30. They'll all get on. Then you have A30, uh, 31 through 60. Then they have... Um, family boarding and all of that goes between A and B. Then you will have the B boarding and then the, the C boarding. So A48 is very, very good. That means you are likely one of the first 48 people to get on and maybe even better because groups 1 through 15 in the A group is usually reserved for people who purchase preferred boarding. Those don't always get filled. Oftentimes you'll get up to the line and you'll see it starts at 16. And if you wonder why, that's why, because nobody purchased the earlier seat. However, we have to remember that uh, people with special boarding needs, usually it's just a handful, you know, three, four, five people that might be in wheelchairs or whatever. They're going to get on uh, before you. And if you're in the B or C group, the families are also going to get on in between A and B. So be aware of that. But that's a, a good way to estimate how many people are going to be on your plane. To retrieve your mobile boarding pass, do you have to sign in to Southwest? 
No, you do not have to sign in. You can go to the Southwest website and click the check in. And as long as you have your information, your confirmation number, first and last name is going to ask you those basic details, you can check in. You don't have to uh, log into the site and you don't have to uh, be a frequent flyer with them. But I, w I recommend you should because you might as well start to build up those points. I just wonder, do I have to check in 24 hours on the dot? Or is it okay to check in, let's say, 30 hours ahead? They will not let you check in 30 hours ahead. So yes, you want to check in at 24 hours on the dot. If you check in at 24.01, they won't let you in. They'll say it's too early. In fact, what I find out is when I check in with my iPhone, the iPhone time tends to be about 10 to 12 seconds before the Southwest check-in time. So if I check in the minute that turns over, usually it kicks me out. It says you can't check in yet. Then I have to go back. So I usually wait till about five seconds after. Then I start the, the, the uh, check-in process and that usually gets me a really nice low number. When will the app list the gate number of the flight? No telling because oftentimes gates uh, they hold off until the last minute. I have often had it where I will print out a paper boarding pass. It has a gate on it and my app does not yet have the gate on it. So there really is no way of knowing for sure uh, when it's going to show up on the app. So always check the information screens at the airport and I always print out a paper boarding pass. I know it might seem redundant and unnecessary to a lot of you, but I always do that. I have to go and check bags anyway. So I always print out the boarding pass. That way, if something happens to my phone, if my phone crashes, if I, my battery goes dead, if something happens, I still have that paper boarding pass. And that usually has a gate. If not the paper boarding pass and not the app, for sure, you'll find that on the screens at the airport. I have bags to check at the airport. Do I have to go to both the kiosk and counter for my hard copy boarding pass and to check in baggage? Okay, there's a lot of questions there. First question, do I have to go to the kiosk to get my paper boarding pass? No. Once you check in at home within that 24 hours, you can have a link emailed to you so you can print your paper boarding pass at home. Also, you can have your electronic boarding pass. I save it in three places. I have it in my Southwest app. I have an iPhone, so I save it to the wallet on my iPhone, and I always take a screenshot of it so it's in my photos. That way I can instantly retrieve it or retrieve it really quickly because it's in three different places on my phone. If something happens, I get flustered, an app isn't opening. I know other places I can find it. So you can print that at home. So do I have to go to the kiosk counter for my uh, to check in baggage? Yes, you do. When you go to the kiosk, now let's talk about the difference between a kiosk and a counter first. There will be standalone uh, kiosks and you go up and you push start and it gets the ball rolling. What do you need at the kiosk? you need your confirmation number. That's really what you need is your confirmation number and your name. So always have that confirmation number. If you don't have it, it will take your Southwest um, Rapid Rewards membership number. It'll accept that. It will generally accept the credit card that you made the reservation on. So if you have the credit card, you can slide that in. It'll accept that. So there are a lot of different methods of identification it'll accept. The easiest is just to use your confirmation number. You can even scan your boarding pass, but I find a lot of times that's tricky. I will often get my iPhone out. I'll put it underneath that scanner on the kiosk. It doesn't always recognize it. It's, uh, you know, some of them are better than others, but that's uh, what you do at the kiosk. Then it'll ask you how many bags you have to check. A lot of those questions like, do you have explosive devices and that sort of thing on you? Always say no to those questions, of course. It'll ask if you have baby seats to check. So it'll ask a lot of uh, questions, but eventually it will print out a long tag. That thing is probably, I don't know, 20 inches long, maybe three feet long. It's a really long tag. And that is what you put on the handle of your suitcase. So it'll say on the back, peel this part off, and you peel that off, and then you wrap it around the handle of your suitcase and stick it on there. You do that before going up 
to the counter. After you do that, you'll wait in a line and they'll call next person and you roll up and you will have to show them your ID because they want to make sure that the person who's checking the bag is the same person that's standing in front of them. So they'll want to see your picture ID, either your driver's license or your passport. They'll check that to the tag that is now on your bags. Um, they may also ask for your boarding pass. So make sure you have all of those things ready and you're all set. If you have two bags, you can check two bags for free with Southwest Airlines. So yes, if you're checking bags, you need to go to both the kiosk and the counter. Now there is typically a Southwest employee wandering around the kiosk. So if this is intimidating to you, don't worry about it. First of all, it is really quite simple. Just walk up to one of them. By the way, look at it. Make sure it doesn't say this, this uh, station is not working. Make sure it's an active station. Uh, if you have to wait in line behind somebody, just patiently wait in line. They'll move on after a couple minutes and then follow the instructions on the screen. It's really quite simple. But if you get confused, ask uh, that employee. They will walk you through it. What is the difference between kiosk and counter? I think we just explained that one. The kiosk does all the preliminary work. The counter is typically where you check the bags and you can get any other questions clarified. I have even had them at the counter if I forgot to print out my boarding pass. They're happy to do that at the counter. They will answer questions like, what gate are you at? They're very, very helpful at the counter. So I hope that this answers all the questions that you have. If you have questions about how to actually check in electronically at home, um, I will post that both up here and down in the description. So if any other questions, you can uh, certainly leave them down below and I'm happy to answer them in future videos. Thanks for joining me everyone. I'm Mark with the Average Me Channel.